at the moment, although we have an enemy, we have unlimited lives. We can never die. We just have to restart the level over and over again, which is irritating enough, but let's make the game even more challenging. So what we're going to do is introduce a lives system so that the beginning of the game, the player has three lives and every time they either land in the lava or hit the spikes or whatever you're using, and every time the enemy manages to uh, catch them, they will lose one life. Now, when the player gets down to zero lives, we can then make a choice. What do we want to happen? I'm going to show you both possibilities. Uh, the first is that the whole game restarts and the second is the whole game ends. So we'll look at those two options. And again, you can choose your own uh, direction for your game. So in order to have uh, the lives, we will need to have a new variable. So let's head over to variable and click make a variable and call this lives. Now inside the player, we have all this code at the beginning, uh, which sets everything to zero or one. Let's put lives in there as well. So we'll keep all our variables in the same place. So we'll set lives to change that to lives. There we go. And of course, it's up to you how many lives you offer. I'm going to do the traditional three lives, but if you want to make it harder or easier, uh, then of course you can do that. Let's close that code back up. And of course, uh, the lives variable has been displayed on the screen and we actually want that. So I'm just going to move it to the uh, right hand side there. So it's slightly um, out of the way of the uh, platform, but we can then see the number of lives and the level that we're on. So if I run the code, you'll see that lives is now shown as three. Right, so now we have the uh, lives available. We need a system that will make those lives go down. Um, so each time the player is caught, we need the um, variable, the, the value in the variable lives to reduce by one. Uh, the simplest way of doing this, of course, is to look at these two blocks of code that we have in the player sprite. So the player is already reacting to either uh, landing in the uh, lava, so that's uh, the ouch, or being caught by the enemy, so that's the caught message. So in either of these cases, they land in the lava or they get caught by the enemy we will want them to uh, reduce the number of lives by one. So if we go to uh, the variable section and get change, and we'll just change that to lives. So change lives by minus one, so it'll go down. Um, I'm gonna duplicate that block because we want one here in the when I receive ouch, and the other one here when I receive caught. So whether the player is landing in the lava or being caught by any one of the enemies, the lives will go down by once. So if we just run the game now, uh, so I'll just jump in the lava. So first of all, you can see the number of lives at the top there says three. And uh, oh, I'm going to get caught by the enemy. There we are. So the enemy caught me. Uh, my lives has gone down to two. Uh, now I'm going to jump in the lava and my lives. Oh, my lives. Oh, yes, they're just delayed a little bit there. Um, so the lives is now one. Now, of course, the problem is that if I land in the lava again, um, oh, I know why there's a delay, because that ouch is um, it's taking one second of uh, that animation. So there's a slight delay on the lives. So I have zero lives now. Uh, but if I jump in the lava, of course, what's going to happen is I've now got, or I will in a second, have minus one lives. Um, and this is going to carry on. So I'm going to end up with minus two lives and so on. So although the live system is kind of working, uh, obviously we need to make sure that when we hit zero lives, the game either restarts or ends. So how are we gonna do that? Well, let's take first of all the idea that the game restarts. So if the game restarts, what do we need to happen? Well, really the only thing that the user will see uh, is that the platform will change to costume level one because the player already, when they're caught, goes back to the start position. And uh, the enemy uh, as well, when the uh, enemy and the player touch, the enemy is randomly shooting off to uh, some random location, I think it is. Oh, we changed that earlier on, but um, yes, yeah, so a random location or something. So um, the only thing that's needed really is for this platform to change. So if we look at the platform code, we have um, when I receive new level, so that's fine. That's not going to really um, do anything. 
But here, when clicked, uh, we switch to costume level one. What we need to do here really is have a forever loop because we'll need the platform to constantly check to see what level, uh, sorry, what lives is equal to. So we have our forever loop. We need to ask a question. So we need to know um, if the variable um, lives is equal to zero. So if we have in fact died. So if lives is equal to zero, what do we want to do? Well, actually we want to switch to costume one. So we'll switch back to costume one. Uh, but what else needs to happen? There are a few other things that will need to happen. We can change the costume to level one, but of course that won't actually change the value in this variable up here, level. So we might be on level four, we die, the platform changes back to look like level one, but the variable up here will still show level four. So we'll need to set level back to one to match whatever the costume is we're wearing. So we'll set level to one. Now, if we are restarting the whole game, we also need to give the player back their three lives. So we're setting the player back to the start position already. The platform is now changing to level one. The variable level one is changing back to level one. So lives will need to be reset to three as well. So that's reset back to whatever it was at the beginning. There we go. So now we've got um, that set up. If, uh, if we just run the game again, so we can see lives is three at the beginning. In fact, what I'm just gonna do very quickly is I'm just going to remove that ouch animation because it lasts two seconds and that's why there's a slight delay um, in uh, display the number of lives. So I'll just take that out for the moment. So there we go, we've got three lives. Let's jump in the lava. We have two lives, jump in the lava again, and we have one life. And now in order to see that the costume's changing, we probably do actually need to get to level two. So let's just go on to level two. There we are, so we're on level two now, and we have one life left. So I need to give myself up now to the uh, mean red enemy. So let's see if I can actually get over to the enemy who seems to be right next to the portal. I can't believe how bad I am at playing this game. It's really quite embarrassing. Right, come on then, Let's, uh, there we are. So you see what happened there is I touched the enemy and the platform has changed back to level one. The variable level has changed back to one and I have my three lives back again. So we've managed to um, code that so that we can restart the game once the lives are lost. But what about if you want to end the game completely? What would we do if we wanted to just end the whole game and say, bad luck, uh, if you want to start again, then uh, you'll have to do this. Well, there's a few things that we can do. If you're happy with the way that it is at the moment, then you can stop this uh, tutorial and move on to the next one, which will start to look at uh, backgrounds and sounds and animations. Um, but if you would like to know how to do this, then let's try uh, changing this code now so that we have an end screen for our game. So in order to have an end screen for our, our game, um, we need to actually draw an end screen. So let's do this screen, screen even. Uh, so let's go to the platform uh, sprite here, uh, add a new costume. So let's click on um, we'll draw this out ourselves uh, let's have a costume which is um, let's say should we go for a completely black shall we go for a black one let's go for black maybe uh, slightly off maybe a slight gray color like that there we go uh, so we'll fill this uh, this whole area with um, gray like that there we go um, and uh, we'll also need to make sure that this is at the very front. So um, we'll set this to the front if, uh, if we need to, because we can see there are a few sprites which are going to be in front of this end, end one, but we can sort that out as well uh, in a bit. Um, now we want some text, which is going to say uh, game over. So uh, let's change that um, to some red text perhaps, or, or yellow or something. Let's, let's go for a sort of a yellowy color. Uh, there we go. Actually, no, let's change red. 
change my mind. There we are. Uh, so uh, we can choose the font as well here. Um, there's not very many fonts, but I'm going to go for pixel. Click in there uh, and type game over like that. And then I can move that around where I want it to go. We can also increase the font size a bit. There we go, like that. And just trying to make sure that that is, oops. Yes, of course, that's going to uh, do that. So there we are. I think that's about in the middle there. That looks good. So game over. Uh, right, there we are. So we've got our, um, well, we'll call that game over screen as well. So we'll call that game over costume. So in our code for the platform, we just added this little block here. So we said if lives is zero, then what do we want to do? Well, of course, um, we don't need to set level and lives to anything because the game's over. So we don't need those blocks anymore. What we will need to do, though, is switch the costume to this game over. And we'll need to make sure that this is right in the very front uh, as well. So what we'll do is in looks, we'll come down to the bottom and click this go to front layer. Um, although just thinking about it, that might possibly, uh, if you've added in some lava or something earlier on, that may cause a problem. If you've done anything fancy with lava and you've done the layers before, that could cause a problem. So just in case you've done that, what we'll do is take that out and instead we'll broadcast a message that says game over. So we'll broadcast a message here that says game over. So new message, game over. And what we'll do is on each of the other sprites, we'll listen out for that game over message. So in the event section, when we receive game over, uh, we're going to hide. So we're simply going to go to looks and hide that sprite. That's the player. Uh, I'll copy and drag that across to the portal. So uh, there it is in the portal. Copy and drag that over to the lava. So there it is in the lava and copy and paste that over to the enemy. So there's the enemy one now as well. Uh, so that's the, um, the game over. And the other thing that we can do is once we broadcast game over and everything has been hidden, we can then stop the game from running. So I think what we'll do for this, let's just, uh, cause we don't want the uh, player to move. So I think the best way uh, of doing this is simply if we go into event, so into um, control, and near the bottom, we have this block that says stop all, like that, stop all. Um, so I think this is probably best if we put this individually in the player. So when the player receives game over, uh, we'll hide the player um, and we will uh, stop uh, all. All refers not to the individual um, sprites, but to the uh, code. So. Um, if I just choose this script, it'll be literally just this block and all the other ones will carry on. Um, I can choose other scripts in this sprite other than this one, which um, might work because we might possibly want to, to try that. So I'm going I'm to do that one. So stop other scripts in this sprite. And uh, let's just bring that down and copy it across to the portal, copy it across to the lava and copy it across to the enemy. So we'll just check those are in there. So um, stop. So this is the same three lines of code for all of the uh, all of the sprites. There we go. And for the enemy, where's the enemy one gone? There it is. So that's just the th same three lines then that simply say when receive game over, hide this sprite and stop all the scripts from running. So that stops the whole game. Now, of course, when we run the game, um, what's going to happen is these, um, uh, these these sprites here are all going to be um, hidden because we've just put this code in here. So what we'll need to do for each of these now is right at the beginning where we have the green flag, we'll just need to sneak in a show block that's in looks. So as soon as the green flag is pressed, we need to show the player we need to show the portals so that's going right under the green flag uh, for lava well lava of course we're hiding at the beginning anyway and only showing it if certain levels 
um, are active so we'll leave that one but the enemy as well the enemy needs to be shown at the beginning we've got two green flags here this one and this one and honestly it makes no difference which one we put this under as long as as soon as the green flag is clicked um, we show this sprite so I can go there for example that doesn't matter right let's uh, try running the game now so I click the green flag so there we are everything is visible and fine I'm going to jump in the lava and uh, I'm down to two levels jump in the lava again down to one not level lives rather jump in the lava again and there we are game over um, so in order to uh, play the game I'm going to have to click the red circle and click the green flag and there we are ready to play the game again so at this point that game is uh, working fine so you've got the choice now of either having your um, game just restart as soon as the number of lives has been lost or having the whole game end and having that very sad uh, game over um, screen there and you can customize that of course however you want so um, what i suggest you do is test the game check to make sure that that is working fine um let's just die once more on level three where we are game over there we are um so that works fine now um you can test that out yourself as i say choose either way of having your game end and uh, when you're ready and it's, it's working fine we'll look at adding some backgrounds adding some sounds and adding some more animations